This is Nina Curley of WAMDA. I'm here chatting with Catherine Maher of accessnow.org, an online um, internet rights site. Catherine, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you today? Good. We're here at SHARE. You just gave a talk. Um, can you just tell our viewers, um, what? give us an overview of sort of the censorship laws that are being enacted in the region lately? Sure. So in my talk, I discussed a little bit the fact that we've seen a rash of censorship laws in the Middle East um, as a region, not just censorship, but laws around things like cybersecurity, morality, um, defamation of the state. And what that all sort of leads up to is a set of codes and laws that allows for censorship of uh, political content, of uh, personal dissent or um, independent opinions. And so what we're really looking at is sort of the way that those laws spread from country to country and the impact they have on individuals in, in being able to talk or express themselves freely online. And how are they spreading? I mean, it seems like it's an acceleration recently. Can you just give us a little bit of, you know, a taste of what's going on in Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq? Sure. So it's not that they're, I mean, we sort of look at them as though they're spreading virally like mushrooms. They pop up in one country and then other countries look around and see, gee, that's a really good idea. We should do that too. Um, and so one of the projects that we actually are working on is how do you track the spread of certain language, um, certain amendments, certain uh, clauses within the laws from country to country. So basically what we think has happened over the course of the past year or so is governments have increasingly become aware of the way that the internet is a very powerful tool for dissent um, in terms of political or organization in terms of individual free speech, uh, looking at and investigating human rights violations, and they've sought ways to clamp down on that that are a little bit more sophisticated than traditional sort of uh, intimidation, harassment, and censorship because they realize that no longer works as well as it used to. Um, and so by criminalizing or creating legislation, it becomes both a means for which to prosecute individuals or persecute individuals uh, who violate those laws, but it also creates what we would call a chilling effect and deters people from actually wanting to express themselves freely online in the first place. Right, so we're seeing sort of a backlash to the Arab Spring, the governments are getting smart. Yeah, I mean that is that is certainly, I think, um, that would be my sort of sense of what is happening. I, there's no direct evidence linking it that way, but it, it definitely seems to be the case. I see, and can you tell us a little bit about the Declaration of Internet Freedom and what activists and entrepreneurs can do today to stand up for their rights? Sure, absolutely. So, um, you know, on the internet we have the same rights as we have offline, and we have a variety of sort of international laws that, that codify what those rights are, free expression, free association, and the like. Now, what the, inter what the Declaration of Internet Freedom does is it tries to actually make those rights really clear and understandable for an internet age, and so it talks about things like the right to privacy or or the right to free expression um, and, and describes that in a way that is really sort of responsive to how we communicate online. Now those that declaration has been translated to a variety of languages so anybody who wants to go and take a look at it can if they want to help into translating it into more languages that would be great but one thing that organizations can do individuals can do is they can sign on to that declaration that's a really easy thing to do um, but what we would ask is that anybody who works in the online space and that doesn't have to be an activist that can be as you mentioned an entrepreneur anybody who's affected by the by the way that the internet works uh, we really encourage you to start reading and, and learning a little bit more about things like internet government governance paying attention to how the internet's being legislated in your own country and then turn to resources like access or organizations in your own country that are looking to defend and um, extend some of these human rights online and think about how ways that you can get involved in supporting them right so we can create sort of regional networks that can respond more quickly when legislation like this is about to go up that's right? exactly what we would like to see yeah i guess entrepreneurs and activists can also check out accessnow.org to read more about the region uh, right absolutely that would be great <laughs> Cool, thanks for chatting with Wamda. Thanks so much.